getting in the backlash from Philly? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they hate me. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just, you know, having good conversations with Vaughn, a person I look up to. Um, helped him on his podcast, and next you know, it's <laughs> on so, um, You see how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> Micah Parsons, Cowboys linebacker, making a shit storm. Let's try to make a shit storm today. At least you know it's coming. <laughs> At least you got fair warning. We're going to try to stir it up as much as we can. Okay. Well, we're the enemy of the people right here. Uh, me and him are. Yeah, I'm. you know, I'm a man of the people for sure. Right. I'm with the people. Right. You know, they tell me I have the best Twitter on social media. It's a great Twitter feed. It's awesome. That was awesome. It really was. Well, as we were talking about before we came on the show, he was kind of joking with me. He's like, oh, man, I've been seeing your tweets. He's like, I think you and me are the most hated two people in Philadelphia. <laughs> so he's been he's been aware. Well, okay. I mean, let's just start there. Let's start with the elephant in the room. All right? Okay. Yeah, you, you nor me are trying to be disrespectful to Jalen Hurts. No. We've got respect for what he's doing. No. I think we just are recognizing this is an unbelievable team they have. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's like the most talented, well put together football team in the league, right? For sure. For Offensive, sure. defensive, right. special team. I mean, the backup defense end got double digit sacks. Yeah, Brandon Graham. Right. I mean, that's Beast. how good they are. That's one of the best offensive lines you've probably seen in your two years in the NFL so far. Best offensive line. Right. Is it the best duo of receivers you've seen so far? Best one and two, for right. sure. Oh, I mean, okay. you could, you could compete a, with. It's in the competition. T and uh, Jamar, Chase, but right? They're definitely. I mean, so that's what you were talking. It was an MVP conversation like we've had, right? And that's where we just, I think we were both like, hey, let's pump the brakes. We like what he's doing, but he's not Patrick Mahomes or some of those guys quite yet. Yeah, and another thing I was saying is I feel like in that term, if your team's so good, is the QB the most valuable player? Right. You know, uh, I look at Justin Jefferson as a guy who should be a MVP caliber year. Right. You know, that's an MVP caliber year, but he don't get the recognition because he's a receiver. Yeah, it's stupid. Yeah, I don't. I just disagree with how we look upon awards and things like uh, that. I agree with you. If you win and you're the quarterback on the best team, you're in the MVP conversation. Yeah. And it just shouldn't be that way all the time. Well, it some of the frustration, be. too, Mike, yeah. I think comes from the fact that defensive players are just always an afterthought. You've got the Defensive Player of the Year award. That's it. That's for defensive players. You're not part of the MVP conversation. There's only been two guys ever to win it. Alan Page in 71 and Lawrence Taylor in 86. And I think part of what you're saying is you can be an MVP and not play offense. It's possible. Right. Why well, wasn't TJ Watt uh, have more votes for MVP last year? Right. When he had 20 plus sacks. Right. You know, that's crazy. Why you didn't know? you? I, that's what I'm saying. I think value, we're talking about value of the team. I believe that there's a lot of defensive players that yeah. bring the same amount of value as a quarterback. Like Ray, you know. Ray, I think in that 2000, he was. As valuable. Oh, more valuable yeah, as a quarterback. Than, uh, no Trent offense. Dilfer. Yeah. Right. Like, because Ray led that team. Like, that right. defense won the championship. But Ray wasn't – he just won a defensive player. It was just like, that was it. Well, well, do you do you get frustrated, too, with the fact that even with defensive player of the year, kind of along the lines we're talking, it's all about sacks? Like, yeah. Because I used to try to explain to people, like, with you specifically, like, you don't get to rush – you didn't get to rush the passer as much as everybody else. No. But – we're still getting the same type of numbers, and then your effect as a stand-up linebacker and the things you were doing there was special. But that wasn't enough of a sexy stat to get you in the conversation. Yeah, that, you know, yeah, I think that they, like, they focalize these points in the league where it's like, if you're a DN, you must have sacks. If you're a cornerback, you have must have picks, but then we get Trayvon Diggs, who has 11 picks, but we're like, oh, well, he has 11 picks, but he gave up yards. Right. It's just like, what do you want? You right. know, or you can have all the sacks, look at Judon or... Miles Garrett, but you know, for some people, it's okay for them to have 15, 16 sacks, but um, other players, it's not. Like, it, I don't know where they create the idea. Yeah, of it's a lot of hype and BS, is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, because some people will have 17 sacks, but they were like, well, then Aaron Donald's year, TJ had 18 sacks, but they're like, well, Aaron Donald's the most dominant player. And it's like, oh, wow. So now it's not about sacks. Yeah. It's about this. We're so gonna I, make something I, else. I, we just need some consistency. That's yeah. all I ask. All right, I got you. I'm when with you. you make your voice heard whether it's with Vaughn Miller's podcast or on Twitter or whatever and you get blowback mm -hmm. does that make you say I'm going to shy away or do you just say the hell with it I'm just going to still be me I don't care and, and or does it even make you more motivated to speak your mind and if people don't like it too bad um I would say it makes me it, it doesn't make me shy away it makes me stand firm like 
I feel like if you have a voice, that's a power thing, powerful thing. You just got to know when and where to use it. Like, it's a time and place for everything. Right. Um, but I feel like this is the type of stuff I want to do things like you guys. Like, I want to be on TV. You want to like, talk. talk these things out. Yeah, I want to talk these things out. Like, I got a mind that I like to expand, and I like to learn new things. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Right. But when I'm right, I'm right. So yeah. I feel like I should be able to speak. Because I, I think as players, we often fear, like, oh, we're in this box of just being a football player. We shouldn't speak. But in reality, we should speak more. Like, um, think about it. Who makes the money? The players or the people up top? The players make the money. They yeah. come to see us. They're not paying to see Roger, no offense. Like, right. And I respect all the guys. I love T Troy Vince and all them guys, but the players don't use their value enough. Like, uh, so I'm like, bro, like, you are the reason why they come to games. Like, they're not coming to games to see anyone else. Like WWE, I love John Cena. They're, people come to the WWE to see John Cena. Yeah. They don't see come to WWE to see Vince McMahon. Right. Like, right. This is not a thing. Yeah, I know. You, it's a little... you sound like somebody may want to run for union president someday. You thinking about that? Maybe, maybe. I, I want to be an ambassador for the league one day. Yeah, I, I could see that in your future. Yeah, I definitely can. But you're right. The game is about the players. You're the ones taking the physical risks. We saw that with Tamar Hamlin. If anybody had any doubt whatsoever about the extent of the risk that you guys take when you put your uniform on and cross that thick white stripe, we saw it on January mm -hmm. 2nd. And I hope it woke some people up yeah. about what you guys really deal with all the time. And the thing with Damar, I just hated that people try to voice an opinion on Damar. Like, I feel like he should be the only one. People were trying to make careers off of Damar. Mm -hmm. That's not right. You know, he, he, no one can know what he went through besides him or his close ones. Like, they should be the only ones speaking. And I felt like there was way too many analysts that tried to point a proven or try to put twat, plot to us to this incident, which is sick to me. Right. Yeah. You know? Right. All right. So give us the, what are we missing in Dallas? What, what, what gets us over the hump? What, what, where, what, what, how can we beat the 49ers and be in this game and beat the Eagles? What do you? Where you think you're at right now as a team? I feel like we're right there. Right. We're we're two plays away. Yeah. We're two or three plays away, and hey, I know that shit. That, <coughs> yeah. That sounds cliche. Shit on here. Don't worry. Yeah, but I know it sounds cliche to always say it, but if you really look at that game, we're legit two, three plays away. Yeah. Or a couple of inches well, away. Well, you take the two interceptions away, I, I think the game's gonna go down to the wire. Super and wire. I, right. Right. You know, um, and we just gotta be more accountable, more aware, and then. Um, we got to go after a free agency too. Yeah. What what areas? I would like to see us get. Um, I like Deron Payne a lot. Yeah, you want to? You need another. You need more big big bodies in the middle. We got too many rushers. Yeah, you got too many speed guys. It's definitely it's something we talked about. It always yeah. worried me about you guys. I would love to get another rusher. Right. I would love to get uh, a big body corner out there. Um, I hope we keep LV. I hope we keep LV. And to everyone else wants a receiver, we might as well get a receiver too. <laughs> like, I, like the money, like you can't spend the money. Like, the, I mean, like you got to spend the money. Like, yeah. why not spend it? Like, yeah, yeah. But I think we got a chance. I think we could be in Vegas next year. I, I, I do too. With Amari Cooper getting traded last year, and then we saw what, the, what happened with the receiver market. Did, was there any talk in the locker room like, why do we, why do we move Amari? Twenty million is nothing. You got guys kissing thirty million now. I, I still don't understand the Amari situation, and I ain't asked enough questions to figure out why that, what was going on and why that happened, but uh, I love Coop, and I love what he brung. Um, hopefully, we get someone like his caliber again. You know, he's a, uh, man, I don't understand. Are we done with, like, stand-up linebacker? Like, at the end of the year, it was like, it seemed like it's D-end all the time. Yeah. And then if it was, like, an obvious pa a run situation, then they'd let you be in the middle of the defensive linebacker so you could run sideline to sideline and make the yeah, tackle. That's the thing I love about DQ, bro. Like, uh, all depend on the game plan is different. Yeah. AFC teams pass the ball. So yeah. So, against them, he's like, your superpower isn't covering people when you can affect the quarterback all game. But when we play somebody like the 49ers and stuff or the Tampa Bay. Stop the run a little. Stop the run a little bit. Let's right. bring you back. And then second and third and longs, let's send you. You right. know, So he creates a great balance for me. And I would say he creates a great structure for me throughout the week. Like he literally had me on my own plan. Like I had no plan like everyone else. Yeah. And he helped me like truly identify like 
when you have a special talent or a special player, you can't treat them like everyone else. Uh huh. That's right. And he was able to like divide that and keep everything together at right. the same time. So, right. You know, all back to back seasons, all pros is all dedicated to Dan Quinn and how he believed in me and he worked with me, studied with me, trained with me, and everything. Like all pro in the football field. Do you think he can sell something here? Let's go. Let's see what Convince you got. What you got today? Let me hear. We see it. Oh. I want sleep number, sleep number smart bed. I got a sleep number bed for you if you want it. Go get it right now. If you want to be an all pro on the field, off the field, you must get your sleep. It's too important. The reason why Chris stays so woke on the show is because he sleeps well. See? You know it. I'm telling you. And that's just the truth about it. I sleep well every night in my sleep number bar bed, 360 gravity mode, anything you want. Damn. You want to watch a movie, read a book before bed? Right. You can adjust the bed. You can adjust. I mean, I, I like can, that about I'll those sleep numbers. Up, I'll be, right book open damn yeah when damn. i want my feet rubbed i elevate my feet up <laughs> right back a little bit have my girl massage my feet damn you i know, need that I, sleep number just, bed yeah you need a sleep number bed i, I don't know it. if I, i'm telling you i'm telling the world right go get your sleep number smart bed damn you cowboys you got this damn sleep number cornered the market huh yeah we got this thing cornered the market um they, it used to be Dak doing sleep number. Now you took that off from him. You're stealing his money. You just like he got a nine. Yeah, he's okay. making too much money. <laughs> he's okay. He's okay. <laughs> hey, hey, he's just breaking it off. He's just handing me he's a couple dollars. Little, yeah, a few cookie crumbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah cookie crumbs for sure. Parsons. We'll be back with more right after this. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.